Hello everyone, welcome to this reaction video. Normally the reaction starts immediately, but I felt for this one, I needed to record a little disclaimer before we start. There's several reasons. One of the reasons is that I expect there could be some controversy with this and some heated comments. Maybe some people will be angry with me. So that's why I'm going to explain a little bit about what happened here. One of my subscribers recommended me to react to this video because they noticed that my attitude towards subscribing or my methods are very different from what is described in the video I react to. I hadn't pre-watched it at all. I just turned it on in my Twitch stream and reacted to it. And indeed, I have very different opinions and I was honest. I basically said what I thought. And sometimes that may come across as a bit harsh. Now I start the video with explaining what my background is as a transcriber. And I didn't do that to show off or to claim that I'm the best transcriber in the world, but I thought even without having watched the video, but knowing that I have different opinions, that it would be important for the viewers to know that I have a lot of experience as a transcriber and I'm not just making up things on the fly. Also in the video, I mentioned a couple of times that after the reaction, I will show you some of my transcriptions and show you what they sound like. Obviously, I cannot put that in a YouTube video because the video will get demonetized if I have to play the original tracks that I transcribed. And even if I have to play my recordings of it, I will get a copyright strike. I even got it on the Twitch stream where I did it. So what I will do is I will link relevant transcriptions I made in the description. So you will see the original and then a recording made by me with an ensemble. There's even a, an album recording I made of the soundtrack of Catch Me If You Can with a tango group. So check that out if you want to really see the stuff I transcribed. There's another issue. At one point in the video, I get a bit confused when the topic of shorthand comes into the conversation. And during the stream, I say some stuff that I thought was relevant. But when I was editing the video for YouTube, I discovered that there is probably a misunderstanding from, from my side that I thought that transcription meant in the video that you write everything down. Listening to it again, it actually might just mean that you figure something out from a recording and you can write it down or not. That's just an option. Looking at it from that angle, it would explain a lot of the things that were said in the video. And when I discovered that misunderstanding, I even thought of not posting this video, but I'm still going to do it because even though I probably misunderstood the original meaning of it. The things I say are still relevant to the process of transcription itself. So that's enough preamble. Let's roll the video. So this is a bass player. He's very well known and he has a big channel, like 80,000 subscribers. His name is Yannick Gwizdala, if I pronounce it correctly, Gwizdala from Los Angeles. And he has a pretty big channel and he's, it's all about transcription. Before we start, because I think for context, it's important to know. Because I have, of course, I have a lot of opinions about transcription, but I'm not saying that as somebody who just transcribed some jazz solos. I have transcribed, for instance, complete Sinatra orchestral things. And I made some videos in the pandemic. I made some videos where we're playing those arrangements. I transcribed orchestra typica tango things like from the 40s where the, the sound quality was so bad. And I transcribed all the instruments. So two bandoneons, string quartets, bass, piano, all the notes. And those transcriptions are very accurate. I mean, you can listen to the original, you can listen to the way we play it. It sounds almost the same. I transcribed the opening tune of Catch Me If You Can, that movie. Very complicated piece. I transcribed the whole thing. We recorded it with a tango ensemble. It sounds exactly like the movie score. So I, I, I didn't transcribe just some jungle solos. That is the background of me as a transcriber. Okay, here we go. Transcription in three easy steps. If you'll give me five minutes of your time, I have three things that will help you transcribe music, both way faster and way more accurately. And of these three ideas, the third one for me is kind of a deal breaker. That's not a shameless ploy to just to get you to watch the end of the video, although I hope you do, but it is a mild warning that maybe there'll be some controversy later on in this video. No matter what- Oh, cool. I didn't know that. So there's going to be some controversy. I'm all for that, man. Let's, let's make it controversial. At your level, no matter- what style of music you play, no matter what instrument you play, no matter what you are attempting to transcribe, there's perhaps nothing more important than your ears. And exercising those muscles is absolutely the number one priority for me whenever I'm working on any kind of transcription project. Recently, I've been working on a... Okay, you already disagree, because I think actually the most important thing for transcribing is your ability to notate things in such a way that are readable. 
And this skill is way more difficult than um, your ears. Because I know lots of people with good ears that if they write, write down music and it's unreadable because the rhythms are very weird. So one rule, for example, is that you can always see the halfway part of a bar. But if you if you write dotted notes that they don't go across the second and the third beat, except for when it's a milonga rhythm, then you can do it. That's the only exception I know. So, for instance, that requires you sometimes to do some puzzling to make sure that you can always see the half of the bar. And if you look at my transcriptions, I'll promise you, you can always see the half point of the bar with a new note. And the reason for that is that if you have to read it, it makes it so much easier to, to, to read it. So, But this is just one rule. There's many of these rules that you can only really learn by studying uh, transcribers who have done it that way and reading a lot of classical music. And here's where classical training is very handy. I've been in orchestras, I've played Stravinsky scores. I've, you can immediately see when a composer cares about this. Like, does he, does he care about the readability of his music? Now, Stravinsky is, of course, famous for notating everything the way he wanted it to sound. So there was not a lot of room for the musicians to put in some some new kind of articulation or what they would call in, in tango fraseo, right? I want to say phrasing, but it's more like liberties with the rhythms. Stavinsky didn't want any of that. He wanted to sound exactly like he had it in his head. So he would write down everything very precise, like with 16th rest and stuff, as 16th like uh, slurred notes. But he really attempted to make it readable. So even though it's difficult to read, it's still readable to a certain extent. That's why an orchestra can read Stavinsky and make it sound pretty convincing. So that skill is way more important than your ears because your ears, yeah, they can be important, but you can also just have your instruments. Let's say, <laughs> let's say you have to describe this, right? Let's say you have to describe that. and you, you don't hear it at all. You can just play the first note and stop it a hundred times and then like put a loop and just... Until you have the note. I mean, that's one way to find the note. But the other thing with writing it down, there's there's not a trick for it, right? You you have to just know how to write stuff down. So I already disagree. But of course, I, I agree that having good ears is very helpful. Um, I mean, I can transcribe very fast because I have a perfect pitch in a range, right? Not the complete range, right? It's from here to the E octave above this E. Most of the stuff that you want to describe for jazz is within that octave. So, yeah, I can describe very, very fast. But also because I know how to write, write it down rhythmically and with the right enharmonics so that it makes it easy to read. A series of videos on my main channel entitled Could I Play Bass With? I've done Dirty Loops and Animals as Leaders, John Mayer, Noah, a bunch of people. And the way I'm able to not... But these are just bass lines. Right? It's probably very easy to describe. No, nothing... I don't want to say anything like negative in this sense, but I will show you some of the stuff I transcribed. And I would challenge anyone. Well, I know some people who can do it, of course, but I would challenge anyone to describe that. Because if you can transcribe that with the same accuracy, now we can talk because uh, it's pretty crazy. But I'll show you later. These transcriptions out and do them in, a, in less than an hour from start to finish. We're talking about learning the song, recording the song, producing the song, filming the video literally in an hour or less. The only way I'm able to do that is because I preload my brain with whatever song it is I'm working on way ahead of time. So tip number one, headphones. You should be listening at all times. Be with your headphones at all times. And if I agree with that. That's very important. Listen with headphones because it's much more detailed. Now he was showing earplugs like this. I think it was Beats, right? I don't know. Maybe they're really good, but I would always want to wear these kinds of headphones. Because I, I, I don't know, maybe I'm just prejudiced, but I, I have the feeling that I hear less with um, with these kinds of ears. But I'm, I might be wrong about that. And also I have like Amazon 
Like, what's his what's his brand called? Soundcore, which is pretty good, but he has beats. Maybe that's better. Maybe maybe that's great to transcribe. And if you are working on something, if you're trying to learn something, trying to transcribe a solo or learn a song or figure out a bass line, don't even get to the writing down or the picking up your instrument stage until you've listened to that song or that piece of music over and over and over again. Of course, everyone is going to be at a different point in the journey of how much you can hear. How You know, that's not the way I describe I hear something, I like it, I start on the top left with the first note and I finish when I'm at the bottom right with the last note. It might take me a long time if it's very complicated, like those orchestral scores I described, I could maybe do like five bars a day, four bars a day, and I'd be exhausted because it's so difficult. Well, if it's a solo or jungle solo, I describe it, I can describe a jungle solo in like 20 minutes. I did Peter Bernstein intro, I, I, I think it took like 10 minutes and I heard it once before I started describing. So I understand this uh, reasoning of listening to a piece many times, but I'm not sure why you would do that. Because you will never remember all the notes, so then you either do it because you love it or something, or well, maybe he's going to give me the reason, but I, I actually don't know why how strong that muscle of hearing is for you. And we should be really honest with ourselves about that. There's no use trying to transcribe the most complex dream theater or periphery or animals as leaders song if our ears can really only handle a simple Neil Young or Crosby, Stills and Nash or maybe a John Mayer thing that only has- McFredden makes a good point. Is he transcribing all the parts? I don't know, let's check that later. But the way he's talking here about John Mayer as a simple thing, I th I probably not then. Probably he's only describing select things or the bass note, the bass part. But if you want to describe all the voicings of the guitar, all the voicings of the, the keyboards, everything that happens, it's going to be very difficult to do that. And uh, I doubt he's doing that. But my point is, you cannot wait until your ears can hear everything because then you will never transcribe. Because I, I will show you some of the stuff I transcribed. If, if you hear that, you think, I'm never going to do that. I'm not, not even going to start. But what you do is you sit down, you take a program like Transcribe, you make a loop of something that's very difficult to hear, and you loop it over and over, and you try to pick out every note from starting from the top until the bass. Or you maybe start with the top and the bass note, like a puzzle, right, where you start with the corners, and then you find all the other notes. And sometimes you look at what you have, and you think, you know what? It just really looks like F7 or something. But I hear a weird note, and it's like a sharp 11. Then I should be hearing uh, this B. And then you start, you play the B, and you listen. If you can hear that B somewhere, and if you can hear it, then you try to listen for which instrument is playing it. And you think, what? I think it's a clarinet playing the B. That's how you describe very difficult things, very difficult parts. Um, I, I will show you that later. But that's, you cannot wait until your ear can hear it because your ear will never be able to hear it. The, the recording could be very poor quality. Uh, maybe that instrument plays very softly, but you can still kind of get a sense of something is happening. You have to just sit down and, and loop it over and over. It has four or five chords. You really want to try and understand where you are in that journey. Do more of those kind of songs and that kind of music at that level and start to push yourself incrementally to the next level. If you're I, again, I have to reference tango. So, tango music is all about the arrangements. The arrangements are the most important thing. And there's two ways. You can make your own arrangements, or you, you play arrangements that are made in history. So, like, you take a, a tango song like uh, Bolbert, you know, many great versions, and you want to play the version of Pugliese. There is no scores. You cannot buy the scores. You have only one option, or two options. You either pay a transcriber to transcribe it for you. It's going to cost you a lot of money. Or you transcribe it yourself. And this goes for every tango musician that wants to have a band. So when you go to start studying tango at the university, like Rotterdam, for example, in your first year, you have to produce a transcription of a tune that's not yet in the library of Rotterdam. And all the, 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 the tunes in the library of Rotterdam are transcribed by students. This is a monumental task for many of the people that go study tango because it's not just like describing a jungle solo. This is describing like all the parts that are very difficult to hear on instruments that you don't play. You get lessons in this, and this is very, very hard. A lot of people stop because they have to do this, but all the people that graduate, they can do that. And they didn't do it by training their ears over and over again. They did it by sitting down and describing note for note, then going to, uh, let's say, you are a violin player, you describe some bandoneon, you know, that kind of accordion thing. 
You go to a Banlion player and you think, what I wrote down here, is that playable? Is that something that the Banlion player would play? And then he would look and say, well, no, he would actually do it this way. And then you remember that. In, imagine being a bass player and you have to describe the piano part. It's so difficult, but that's what you have to be able to do when you want to be a tango musician. And so I think the most difficult transcriptions are done or the most difficult path to transcribing is being done by students of tango departments. Incredibly difficult. Working on songs that only have four or five chords in them, start to expand to songs that have... I've, I've taught at the department, and I've also taught uh, transcription that way. And we just sit down and we start with a bass note and we just work note by note by note. And you can maybe only do like four, four bars a day if you're fast. Eight bars a day if you're really fast. Half a bar a day, maybe one bar a day if you're a beginner. Probably have a bar a day. Have a little more challenging harmony. If your upper limit of transcribing melodies and transcribing solos is something like Miles Davis' solo on Freddie Freeloader, which is a pretty straightforward blues and very rhythmically and harmonically and melodically simple in terms of the solo, okay, start to do more of that. Maybe investigate a little Art Pepper, maybe some Chet Baker, maybe some Stan Getz. Maybe you're not at the stage of transcribing Alan Holdsworth and Michael Brecker just yet. Start to understand where your ability is and don't try and run before you can walk. The more you train your ear at the most basic, most fundamental level, the easier it's gonna to be to work on that far more complex stuff later. And I don't think a lot of people give sort of simple pop music and simple pop melodies and the real basics as much credit as it's due, especially when they're coming at it from a jazz standpoint. I think as we get to our third topic in a minute, uh, we're gonna uncover a few, a few truths which may be a, a little tough to swallow. Before we get there, let's go to our second tip, which is having some kind of shorthand. I'm not saying that you have to be a world-class music copyist and capable of writing down orchestral scores. Which I've done. I've written down orchestral scores. I was hired many times by orchestras to write down um, scores to orchestral recordings from which the parts were lost. But no matter what it is, no matter how you notate, whether it's just um, handwritten notes, words, and, and actual your know, directions to yourself, whether it's just chord symbols, or whether it's actually notes themselves, or just rhythms, no matter what it is, try and have some kind of shorthand. I'm gonna show you this chart which is the sum total of what I wrote down for the woven web, the Animals as Leaders song I did recently on the main channel. Wait, 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 let's, let's take a look. Let's channel, I'll link that video like. kind of shorthand. I'm gonna show you this chart, which is the sum total of what I wrote. <clears throat> Let me see. So the first bar, it's four sixteenths. One, two, three, four, so it's, yeah. Okay. So I don't know, what does he mean by shorthand? Is that that means that you don't write everything down, but just some things that remind you of what's being played? Is that shorthand? Probably he means that by it, right? Let's let's I don't know. Let's play it back. It's chord symbols, whether it's actually notes themselves or just rhythms. No matter what it is, try and have some kind of shorthand. I'm going to show you this chart which is the sum total of what I wrote down for the woven web, the Animals as Leaders song I did recently on the main channel. I'll link that video below. When you listen to it, it doesn't sound like the easiest thing to figure out, but the song was based on three or four sections. It wasn't through composed, it wasn't 20 minutes long. There weren't like eight different themes, crossing paths. It was really three or four riffs. And once I dialed into what each of those riffs were, there was a lot of repetition, so it was easy to put the form of the song together. So a thing that it started off sounding quite complex on the surface actually became quite simple just from that first listening element of the process. Okay, so I think he's talking about uh, if you know the form beforehand, you don't have to keep writing down the same thing because you can just realize that's what I think he means, right? It's like, oh, this bass line is coming back later. Yeah, that's, that's uh, smart. I think that kind of thing would be really helpful if you describe music with form, that is repeating. But I'm guessing, I mean, I've never done that in that way, right? I just start writing and I, I hear the same thing again, right? And I notice it's the same thing. I'm not going to write it down again. I just copy paste. But he's writing it by hand, obviously. Um, I don't know why you would do that because it's, it's way slower than with the computer. I promise that. doesn't matter how fast you write. I, I'm sure I can type it faster. So I can just do copy paste. Or I can put repeat symbols. I'm not sure why this point is important. 
unless you write by hand, I think. But who, who writes still by hand? Obviously, some people do, but like on the conservatory, we don't, or the university, we don't accept that. If you write transcriptions by hand, you have still have to put them in the computer to be before you present them. We don't accept um, things written by hand <clears throat> unless it's some some exception or something. But so then you have to do double work. You have to first describe by hand and then put it in the computer. So we just advise everybody to immediately use. We advise everybody to immediately do, immediately use either Sibelius or Finale or Noteworthy or one of those programs, and don't, don't waste your time uh, writing by hand. Or Sound Slice. <laughs> sound Slice. Very good, too. Okay, tip number three. Let the comments explode. Here we go. I don't care. I've said this my entire career. I've, more importantly, done this my entire career. It is why my ear is as finely tuned as it is today. The main reason I'm able to operate at the level I do when it comes to the ear, to listening, to transcription, is because I never slowed anything down, ever. Any gimmick, any that is crazy. That is crazy stuff. I've written down all the parts of an orchestra. You cannot do that without slowing it down. You have to slow it down. And then you know, you will notice that it's such a valuable tool and looping. So I don't understand why you wouldn't slow it down. That's Maybe there's a good reason. Any trick, any bullshit, basically, that is sort of tricking your ear into a false sense of security or even yourself into a false sense of ability. This is where we go. I guarantee if you don't... To, uh, slow down stuff and you transcribe the same stuff I have transcribed you're going to make so many mistakes and I will find them very very fast by slowing the mu music down and then checking it you go back to the context and really being honest with yourself about where your ear is at it's not a bad thing and we all want to transcribe and learn the fastest baddest most crazy shit there is but we also have to be honest about where our ear is at and work up to that work towards that work on the foundation work on the fundamentals until we have that ability to pick out phrases at breakneck speeds I, no i don't agree with this at all just describe anything you like you love you want to learn and use every tool you can i made the point before but if there's ai that can describe it perfectly you'd be crazy not to use it who cares if you can hear it uh, at, at the real speed i don't care I, I care about if it's accurate and people that join my patreon uh, or or buy my books with with uh, phrases, or the orchestras that paid me to transcribe for them. They really didn't care if I had like the best ears in the world or the worst ears. The only thing they cared about was if they played a transcription that had sounded exactly or very close to the original. Uh, that's the only thing they cared about. If it's accurate, you know, then use any tool you have. In the middle of a Michael Brecker solo or, or bass line from, you know, from Periphery, from Nolly Get Good, or whatever that thing might be that you're in love with musically, that you want to learn, that you want to bring into your playing, that is maybe a little bit out of reach right now. Just be honest with yourself about your transcription ability and work on the stuff on your level and push yourself incrementally. Don't make some huge leap and don't kid yourself. In it's the opposite of what the uh, students have to do at the tango department. They have to make a huge, huge, huge leap and they just have to do it note by note. And... Uh, I promise you, like after five years of that, they can transcribe anything, uh, even without perfect pitch, without great ears, maybe even without being able to recognize uh, chord progressions. But they, they know how they can pick out certain things on certain instruments. And that is what it's all about. And you can only do that by just doing it yourself into having this ability because you slowed all that stuff down and then just worked it up to speed all you've done there is cheated and then worked on some motor skills yes great you cheated what's cheating about it though you're describing something that's very difficult which would take you 10 times longer without the tools with a big chance of making a mistake and if you wait until you can do that then you have to wait for years I will show you the, the, the stuff I'm talking about. You have to wait for years, and then you probably will never do it. So, uh, and the motor skills thing, yeah, you have to practice your motor skills to play anything. But of course, you also have to practice how it's played, where you can play it, uh, how it fits with anything else you play. But it, it all starts with motor skills, though, because without motor skills, you can't play anything. If he's pre-burning the song into his mind, I can see why he wouldn't have to slow it down, because he would be doing it in his mind. Again, it doesn't work with a big band, though. You're not, never going to be able to hear, uh, put in your mind what the third trombone is doing. 
what you didn't do was really improve as a musician. And I think that's the underlying message that I want you to leave this video with is I want you to improve as a musician. You have so much more fun when you can react to things in real time. And that is where your ears are your biggest asset. So let's recap. Number one, listen, 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 always be listening and then dial that in and go super deep inside the thing it is you want to transcribe as you get up to the time where you're like, okay, now I'm doing it. Now I'm writing it down. Number two, have your shorthand, have some kind of notation so you can put something on paper. You can have a bit of a visual reference and even better, if you can get into standard notation, you can save all this stuff. You can archive all this stuff and it can act as further inspiration and future inspiration to you many years from now. And number three, and absolutely most importantly, again, I hope the comments are just exploding right now because I know there's, you know, it's like the metronome thing. There's all kinds of little minor controversial hot takes, but Number three, and to me, most importantly, don't ever slow anything down. Music happens in real time. When you're on a gig and somebody in the band plays something, maybe you're the bass player and the piano player does something, you didn't quite hear it and you couldn't quite react to it the way you wanted to. You don't have the option to walk over and say, oh, stop, stop, guys. Let's, let's, can, can you explain that to me? Can you slow it down? Because music happens in real time. And what I think we should be aiming towards is to be completely natural and fluid and fluent on the bandstand. This is all obviously from a performance standpoint. That's what I want you to leave here with. Don't slow anything down. Do the hard yards on the foundation and you will go way farther than you could ever have imagined. Let's check out some of his transcriptions, like a recent one and then some of mine, just to see.